Hey, this is Chris Riley from Financial Modeling Education, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can build a direct and indirect cash flow into the same financial model. So this is a very basic three-statement model that only has three cash flows. One is they are paying their people. We've got some salary and wages, as well as a bonus accrual, and then taxes and benefits. So that's one cash flow out the door to pay the people that work there. And then there was a $50,000 investment in the company right here through the form of contributed capital. And then the final thing was a $20,000 inventory purchase. So those are the only three things that this company has done. And so when we scroll down to the statement of cash flows and we use the indirect method, what it's doing is it's taking the accrual-based information from the income statement and making adjustments so that you can see the impact in cash. And when you look at it, it's just a little bit, frankly, it's confusing. If I look at this month here in June, I see $20,000 of net income, but then my change in the accounts receivable goes down by 50, but then it goes up by 50 here, and the change in inventory is down by 20 here, but up by 20, and it just it's just a little bit confusing, honestly, and it all sort of nets out to a negative 1,200 for the month, and I'm going to say, well, okay, I guess that makes sense. If I scroll down, my beginning cash was 24,000, all in there was 1,200 out, and so I've got 228 as left over, but the reason this is confusing is because this is the indirect method. It takes our net income and it makes adjustments to reflect it in cash. And so the way that's a little bit easier to understand is actually building it with the direct method. And so I have that down here right below the indirect method. Under the direct method, you're not taking the changes in the accrual accounting and converting it to cash. You're just showing exactly when that cash went in or out of the business. And so in this instance, we have the beginning cash, which is the 24000 that we saw right up here in the indirect statement. And then all it's showing is 1000 out to pay the people and another 200 out to cover the benefits. And there's that same 1200 right here. So there and there. And so that makes a lot more sense to me. 24000 minus the 1200 and then here's my ending balance, the 22.8, the same as we had up here in the indirect. And so for the following month, where it get really confusing, where the 50 goes from negative to positive, and you know what's going on there, it looks like there was a lot of cash this month, it's easier to understand in the direct method, where we start with that same 22.8 that we had the last month, but then the first cash flow in is a full 50,000 cash collections on the product revenue. So, okay, that makes sense. And then we have to pay our people again and then pay the taxes and benefits. And there's the 48.8. And so it's just much easier to follow. The way that you can do this in a financial model is you have to build your support accounts in a specific way. So I'm going to show you that. Collections on product revenue. This links to an accounts receivable account. So if I hit F2 on that, you can see it's down in row 163. I'm just going to press control open bracket and jump to that really quick. Here's the layout for accounts receivable. And this is called base modeling or a corkscrew modeling. When you have the beginning balance plus some additions, less some subtractions gives you the ending balance. And so in accounts receivable, the subtractions are the cash. And so this piece, the minus 50, is actual cash that's coming into the company. And so that's linking to my direct cash flow. With inventory, inventory is really just a flow through account. It's the it's the record of the value of the goods that you have, but it's not really a cash account. It's the purchases that increase it, and then it's the cost of goods sold that decrease it. The cash is actually going to hit accounts payable, where the purchases increase the account, but then the cash payments to the vendors decrease the account. And so this $20,000 purchase of inventory wasn't actually paid for until two months later when it came out of the accounts payable, and the bill went to the vendor. And so if we go up to the direct method again, you can see here's that $20,000 payment coming out of accounts payable. It has nothing to do with the inventory account. For all of these other accounts, you're just going to link them directly to your income statement. So salaries and wages right here is a direct link. I'm just going to press control and open bracket. That brings me up to my income statement. I don't need to make any kind of adjustment for accrual accounting here. This is $1,000 going out to the people that work in the company in this month. So this is effectively a cash basis expense. Whereas the revenue that I've earned here, this $50,000 worth of revenue, just because I've earned it, doesn't mean I've collected that cash. And so when we get into the statement of cash flows, the indirect method is saying, well, you, you had that 50000 all here in your net income, but then we got to take it out of the net income and move it into your accounts receivable, and you don't get it until later. And so that's the distinction that the indirect method does. It translates 
the accrual-based accounting into cash. And that's why it's a little bit confusing when you read it like this. It's much, much simpler, however, in the direct method where we just say, here's what we had, and then here's that accounts receivable collection coming in. Again, I earned the revenue here, but I didn't get paid until here. And so to close out, the way you do that is you need to include base modeling in your model, which is a beginning, an addition, a subtraction, and an ending balance. And just to show you that final example, let's go back to the accounts payable, where this 20,000 came from. Here's the accounts payable, the beginning balance, plus the purchases, less the cash payments. This is the piece that affects the cash, and then that's the ending balance. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.